thin yourself with a stick, we're gonna talk about shorter sticks, medium sized sticks, all the way up to the length of a walking cane. I want you to also learn how to use them. Start with this easy warm up, going side to side. I want you to get the blood to flow into your wrists. So can you defend yourself with a stick? Yes, the most obvious answer is because it has length advantage over an opponent. You're gonna keep them back. If they have a knife, you can stop them. Depending on the length of your stick, you have longer distance. This is kind of a medium size, but you have a longer distance to keep them back, a shorter distance. And in the case of the palm stick or the Yawara, I have this new product I wanted to show you right here. This came in and I had on the, there's a link below if you wanna see what these cost. They're very inexpensive. This has a grip that keeps it from coming out of your hand. You put it here. If you're really close, you don't have any other option. That goes into the throat, goes into the eye, goes down into the groin, into the solar plexus, into the neck. It's titanium, it's lightweight, it's extremely powerful, very strong. So, so this really works. Hello, it's IM or LM, it's good to see you. But if you're asking yourself, can you defend yourself with a stick? The answer is yes, why, how? We're warming up here. I'm gonna show you why and how very quickly. We're gonna get right into it. Now this is the collie stick that I'm using to go back and forth in my hand. I just wanna get some mobility in there. I wanna get the blood to flow. I wanna keep the joint safe from injury. And I wanna build some strength and speed and power in my strikes for self-defense. It's also gonna improve my grip strength. It's gonna allow me to hold on to the stick during the middle of the self-defense fight. You're going to use the stick to defend yourself by thrusting first. So that's the first thing we're gonna talk about. I'm gonna show you with the cane, I'm gonna show you with the collie stick, and I'm gonna show you with my palm stick, with the Yawara. The first thing with the cane, the first basic idea is put it between you and the threat. Can you defend yourself with a stick? Yes, put it between you and the threat, and then simply push straight forward. Thrust, now this is an arm thrust. If I move my body forward, you can see I have a lot more power. So when you train, put your palm stick up, or put your cane between yourself and the threat and then thrust, pushing in and through. So this is how you use a stick for self-defense. If you're using the collie stick, this is also known as a screma or arnis. It works the same way. Hello, Ryan from England. Hello, everybody else. You put it between you and the opponent or you and the threat and you simply thrust, just pushing straight through. Now, why does that work? How does it, uh, can you defend yourself with a stick? Why is the answer yes? Because the stick, depending on the material, is going to be harder than their nose, or their teeth, or their eyes, or their throat. You're not gonna get into a tit-for-tat battle. You're not gonna go back and forth. You're not gonna fight them like you would in a movie. This is all about self-defense. Can you defend yourself for, with a stick? Hello, CN dude, hello everybody else. The answer is yes, because the stick is harder than their flesh. You're going to use the principles of violence for self-defense. You're going to do violence against their face with the end of that tip. Now, if it's the collie stick or a scream or knee stick, whatever you want to call it, you're simply thrusting straight in. And just like before, you want to be able to move your body in. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Justin. Rattan is my favorite choice. The question is, do you uh, prefer rattan or metal for the collie sticks? For collie sticks, I prefer rattan for this Cane Masters oak cane. Oak is always the best, in my opinion, because of how long it lasts. It's, it's extremely durable and strong. Hickory is also a great option, but I like oak because I like the way it feels. This in rattan is too lightweight. On the cane, I'm gonna show you some features, some differences between the lengths of stick and the type of stick but we both start with the thrust. Using metal on collie sticks, I find most of the collie sticks come, if they come in um, aluminum, then they, they bend after a while. They bend under full force. If they come from a heavy, if it's a heavyweight, hello to Amit from Hong Kong and Akra the Cat, good afternoon. If it's a harder metal, if it's something like steel, it's almost too heavy. One of the benefits of this length of stick, this Escrima Collie stick, is that you're picking up a lot of speed. And when you do, you use this in rattan, this is unpeeled. Unpeeled means it still has the original skin on the outside. You can see the fibers. It's a grass, Collie is a, or uh, rattan is a grass. Peeled is when it's just smooth. They peeled it off, it's probably was a bigger piece and they shape it to make it look uh, a certain way. Justin, I had, Justin said, uh, Send me a video. Yes, please. 
Everybody, send me a video. I'd love to see everybody's video. Go to pasquinali.com. There's the contact box in there. Send me contact there, and then I'll send you an email back where you can send it to me. The best way to send it to me is like Google Documents or Dropbox or one of those ways, that, however, however you want to do it. I can use pretty much any of them. Or send it to me on Facebook. From here, if I push straight in with the body, I have more power. So I want you to practice after you've done your warm up. practice sliding in, closing the distance, and thrusting all the way through the opponent. Thrust is first. That's the first strike. How can you defend yourself with a walking stick? You thrust. How do you defend yourself with a collie stick? You thrust. How do you defend yourself with the pocket Yawara stick? This is the pocket Yawara. This one in titanium is my uh, choice. Also, if you have this in wood, if you go to the Cane Master site, you'll see the one with the wood. It's a little bit thicker than that, which I prefer. And either way, I'm just gonna thrust, no matter how, if I'm holding this one. The other one's really nice because it goes around, there's a little strap that goes around your knuckle, and then you can take that and just thrust straight in. If you wanna see the wooden one, go to the first link. If you wanna see this one in metal, go to the second link. But from here, I just thrust straight in, or I can thrust straight in this way. If they're behind me, or if they've taken a hold of me, their hands are on me, I can come in and just go straight down and in. Now, I can see that I'm about to make a hole in the bag with this one, so I'm gonna back off of that a little bit. And <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you the basic techniques. These things, these you are, these pocket sticks, these are extremely effective for self-defense at close range, medium range, you have the collie stick. And again, we start with a thrust. Longer range, you have your walking cane. And this is a custom-made self-defense cane from Cane Masters. That's the first link below. This one gives you that reach. Now, if they have a knife, and I always keep the knife in my pocket when I do these videos, when I can, because I want you to see this important difference in length and this advantage that you have when you use something like a walking cane. Now this, the advantage of this, you lose it in the pocket stick. Look at that, the pocket stick is shorter. So you lose that advantage. So that's one big difference. Collie stick or a screamer, you still have significant advantage. They pull, they pull out the knife or better yet, before they get that knife all the way out, you're going right into the eyes. If they can't see you, they're gonna have a hard time slicing and jabbing and stabbing you. If you smash them on top of the head and it knocks them out or go into that neck, compress that flesh, hit that nerve, they go unconscious, they're gonna have a hard time attacking you with that knife. But having a knife, that's a big danger if they have the knife, but you have the stick, you've got some advantages. You've got reach. The stick doesn't bleed. The stick doesn't bleed. That uh, titanium certainly won't even scratch. But the idea is hit them as soon as you can and start with the thrust. The second way you're gonna strike them is a downward angular strike coming from one side or the other side, coming from your shoulder and out, shoulder and out. Look at that basic V that I'm making from here to here. And this is how you practice from here to here, here to here. If you're using your cane, it's the same basic strike. I'm coming from the shoulders forward, shoulder forward. Now hear the difference there between the two sticks. Rattan, it hits hard, but oak, cane master's cane, it hits way, way harder. You have more weight and you have a stronger, you have a hard wood where you have a soft grass. It's a hard grass, we'll call it a hard grass. It's like bamboo, it's more of a grass and it, it's gonna flex more, but it's going to, you're gonna pick up speed with this. With this one, you're just gonna break bones. And so this would be my preference, but the idea of learning how to fight with a stick is that you can find sticks anywhere. Can you defend yourself with a stick? Yes, what length, what size? That's gonna vary depending on what's in your environment. We were talking about the other day, I was at the beach and we saw the umbrellas. And in the umbrellas, on the bottom part of it, people go to the store here locally, they'll go to the CVS pharmacy, buy a cheap umbrella for the beach because they don't have one, they're vacationing. At the end of their vacation time, they throw them in the trash cans all along the beach. So you're walking down, you need a self-defense tool, a self-defense weapon, you pull out one of those umbrellas. And I'm not joking, they're everywhere. And usually on the bottom of the umbrella, there's two pieces. This is the part that goes into the sand. It's got a pointy end. It's like hard piece of thin metal that's hollow. And it's eventually gonna bend, 
but it's a great thrusting tool. It's a great thrusting weapon. And that's an improvised fighting stick, that piece of umbrella. Or you can find, I found stakes, uh, parking, no parking here, stakes into the ground made out of metal. And it was again, about this long. So now you pick out a metal stake, you have a slashing weapon, you have a thrusting weapon, and then you have a pushing weapon. This shoving weapon is the third way you're gonna learn how to defend yourself with a medium sized stick. I consider these both shorter to medium length. Compared to like a long bow staff or a quarter staff or even the martial arts Joe, which comes to about here. So this weapon, and this weapon, you have pushing, you have slashing, and then with two hands, just pushing straight in. And that might not seem like much until you think about what the targets are that you're gonna remove and destroy. The nose, the eyes, the teeth, the throat. This against flesh, against teeth, against bone, this is gonna win every time. This is gonna be even more effective. The nice thing about the cane that the short stick doesn't have is that you have this big hard hammer. You turn that around and then you can hit with that hammer or you have that tooth. And that's, this, is a, this tooth is on all of the Cane Master's cane. You have this bevel here, right there, where you can rip and pull and pull the flesh off. Um, yeah, we're still doing it. Uh, Justin asked about the long training weekend. Yes, I'm gonna do a long training weekend. I'm shooting for uh, somewhere toward the end of July. Somewhere toward the end of July. I'm still trying to figure out what makes the most sense. But I wanna have an opportunity. I've got the space. The ocean is literally a block that way. We, you guys can come down here if you're able to. We'll do some training in the sun. Um, we've got the indoor, we've got all the bags, we've got all of the self-defense tools. We can talk about weapon retention if you're a concealed carry kind of person. We can talk about hand-to-hand -hand close quarters combat. We can talk about empty hand combat. We can use the fighting cane. We can use the bow staff, the Joe, all the different martial arts weapons that you would use for self-defense. And then we can make it a fun, we can do a, a field trip and go out and look for improvised sticks. Because I think if you learn how to fight with a stick, you have a lot of options. Sticks are everywhere. Uh, we were on the golf course for dinner last night. On the golf course, obviously sticks are everywhere on the golf course, and not only are they sticks, but they're usually a big club on the end. That's a great slashing or striking weapon. It's also a good thrusting weapon, and if you have to, that pushing weapon. So when you take this weapon, think about pushing straight in. Now let me show you one more way that I want you to practice your self-defense. Can you defend yourself with a stick? Yes, learn how to thrust, learn how to slash, learn how to shove, and then punching from the side. And think about when someone grabs your cane, grabs your collie stick, grabs your bow staff, whatever stick you've got, when they grab, you're gonna twist and push. Now, we were, I was just doing this before we started live. I had one of my in-person cane students here, a gentleman in his 70s. We talk about the twists all the time. And I, every, at the end of every class, I challenge him, I stress test him a little bit. I come at him faster, harder, and I'm holding him, I'm pulling at him, I'm twisting his cane, and he overturns a little bit. And I said, here's the correction. You just come to here, and then you go straight down. Uh, DG says he's back, he has been a while. Good, welcome back, it's good to see you. Sensei Emmett, good to see you also. So the way you correct this, someone grabs your cane, your stick, your collie stick, your fighting stick, whatever you're using to defend yourself, simply turn to 12 and six. Think about the old fashioned clock, 12 o'clock, six o'clock. 12 and six, 12 and six. Doesn't matter which hand is on top, whichever hand is on top will go straight down. And don't overthink it, don't reach for it, just push down. From here, push down. Practice this, push down, push down. Practice boxing them right in the sides. Think about hitting them right in the side in the temple. Even if you don't hit them in the face, you start coming in their face like that, they will have to back up. Then you can come in and thrust this way or come in and shove this way or take it into one hand and practice your slashing techniques for self-defense that way. The best thing for you to do is to visualize in your mind how you will defend yourself by taking away, removing, destroying, utterly uh, just obliterating their ability to see, breathe, their ability to stand up and uh, break their arm, their ability to grab you, stab you, their ability to stand upright, thrusting through the middle, taking out the knees, defending yourself. Now, 
I think the question was, can you get in trouble with a, a palm stick like this? You can tell somebody it's a fidget spinner. You know, you spin it through your fingers. But no, I don't think you get in trouble with that. And again, this is just one option. This is kind of an entry level option. It's, it's interesting. It's kind of fun. It's made out of titanium. I really like the one in the first link below, the one by Kane Masters, because it's a little chunkier for my big chunky hands. There's a strap that goes around the knuckles. And so check that out. But I wanted you to see what Yawara sticks are. Palm sticks, also known as a Kubaton. A lot of people make them into keychains, Kubaton keychain. Just striking straight in, straight down, coming forward, coming down on top, coming into the neck. And the idea is that, again, this titanium is lightweight. It gets in your hand very fast. This keeps it in your hand from coming out. Even if with a sweaty grip, you're not coming out of this. This is a, a really good grip. Um, but it's going to you know, it breaks bone. I mean, this stuff, this will break or, or go through. This will almost puncture going to somebody's lung for self-defense. But these are self-defense tools. People say that to me all the time. Um, not all the time. I get this question from time to time. Or, or it's more, usually not a question. It's common. Well, if you pull out that stick and you beat somebody with it, you're going to jail. That's not the plus that we're talking about. I'm not talking about walking around with a stick looking for a fight. I'm talking about a fight comes looking for you. You need to defend yourself or your family. It's your right to defend yourself. It's your right to stay safe. And you pick up a stick. Maybe it's not the college stick that you trained with, but you pick up some branch, a, a tree branch. Or you pick up that, like I said, on the beach, they have those um, beach umbrellas, the broken beach umbrella. And sometimes not even broken. People just throw them away because they, they can't take them back on the plane. But you pull that out of there and all of a sudden they've got a knife right they have that i don't know if, the, if they've got a ballast sign like that i don't know if they have a butterfly knife but they've got a knife and and you have to defend yourself don't try to take away the knife don't try to block the knife from here go right to the face right right straight in straight straight down coming across take out the knee Wherever you can hit them and wherever you can hit them over and over again until the fight's over. Self-defense. Because uh, since Emma just said it, as long as it's self-defense, you'll be fine. I'm not saying going looking for a fight. Better option. If you, uh, are some, if you need to carry a walking cane or if you carry a walking cane for self-defense, which is your right. No one's allowed to ask you to prove that you need it. But now you have an option. The guy comes in because it's with you all the time. You bring it up between their legs, right? Bring it up and across the face. And you can hear just from the way it's hitting, you have all of these force options, force multipliers. Maybe you're not as old as you, or as young as you used to be. Maybe you're not as strong, not as mobile, not as flexible, but you still have the right to defend yourself. And people maybe see you as a target. So this allows you now you said you appreciate the basic exercises. Thank you. I appreciate the fact that you guys are here watching. But keep it simple. That's the whole point of stick self-defense. Can you defend yourself with a stick? The answer is yes, if you keep it simple. Simple means put it between you and the threat. Number two, thrust, slash, shove, box, twist if they grab it, smash them on top of the head. Keep it as simple as that. Add other techniques as you grow. Learn to do this quick flick up between the legs. Trust me, it's very fast. They don't see it or bring it up into the side of the head or in the ribs or on the thigh into their knee. And you can defend yourself if you keep it simple. So can you defend yourself with a stick? Yes. How do you use the stick for self-defense? All of the basic techniques. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't try to learn how to, we were doing this today. And that's something you can practice, but this is just, it's a flow drill. We're just doing that to learn how to flow, to improve your mobility. That is not necessary from day one. From day one, this is necessary. Get it between me and him. That's necessary. You can do that without any training. From here, from here, 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 and there. That's it. That's not it, but that's the beginning. If you get the beginning, you'll be able to get to the end very quickly. And remember, every single strike for self-defense, you want to commit. Go all the way in. Swing for the fences like you're hitting a home run. Because if you can stop them with one strike, that's better. You're not trying to fight them. 
It's not a fight. It's not a competition. You're not trying to compete with them. You're trying to destroy for self-defense. Destroy. Not uh, hang out, not compete, not see who's the faster, younger, whatever, whatever. It's throat, nose, eyes, mouth. Put them on the ground. Let the cops take care of them. You guys have been